In this training, you'll be introduced to Zendesk reporting and analytics tools and how they can help you measure your team's success. My name is Craig and I'm an instructional designer here at Zendesk. I've been working closely with the product team and other experts to create this training which I'll walk you through today. So, how does reporting and analytics help you meet your needs? Well, Zendesk reporting tools can help you and your business with powerful built-in reports that enable you to view and analyze key information about your customers and your support resources. You can capture your team's data, allowing you to make data-driven decisions that have a positive effect on your customer satisfaction. You can measure your agent's performance to identify and optimize workflows for improved efficiency. You can understand trends and gain insights into areas where improvements will have an immediate impact. And overall, these tools allow you to increase your operational efficiency as well as your customer's experience. These powerful analytics can help you lead your team and shape your business. They allow you to uncover customer insights and act on them to improve their overall experience with your business. Zendesk Customer Experience Trends Report from both 2020 and 2021 found that customer satisfaction is the top priority for both service managers and agents. We also found that companies that leverage data the most see a 79% reduction in customer wait times and 36% faster resolutions, along with a greater volume of solved customer requests. Zendesk Analytics Tool is also known as Zendesk Explore. It integrates data from every channel, collating information from every ticket, phone call, self-service click, chat, and email. This data allows you to gain visibility into every interaction. So how does it work? Let's start with an overview of the creation process. The three main components are datasets, queries, and dashboards. Datasets contain the information that you're going to report on. Each one gives you access to an area of your Zendesk data that contains related sets of information. You will choose and import the data you're interested in, and from this you can then begin creating your reports. Query is the term used in Explore to describe any reports or graphs you create. In this training, we will use Query and Report interchangeably. When you create a query, you're asking a question to the dataset. The returned results can then be easily visualized. For instance, you might want to know how many tickets were solved by each day of the week, displayed in a bar graph. Or perhaps you want to know the customer satisfaction percentages for chats shown in a pie chart. Each query can be standalone, but they can also be added to a dashboard. Dashboards provide a customizable space for organizing and sharing the queries you have created. You can visualize queries on their own, but putting them on a dashboard allows you to add other queries to better contextualize their findings. Dashboards are also the perfect way to share and collaborate your analytics with your wider team. These reports can be sent out on a schedule or at request. Zendesk Explore comes with a vast number of powerful pre-built queries and dashboards for you to use right out of the box. They were carefully created using best practice analytics and leading industry standards. However, when the time or need comes, you will be able to create your own dashboards from the queries you have created from the datasets provided. Let's take a look now at the different levels of access depending on the staff role. The viewer role limits the user to only being able to view dashboards that already exist. They can interact with components like filters, but they will never be able to edit or create their own content. The editor role has the additional abilities for the user to create their own queries, dashboards, and datasets. However, they cannot manage permissions on them. The admin role is the same as the editor, but with higher level access to manage the overall account settings. This includes setting up email notifications and deciding what exactly those with the editor role have access to. Let's take a look at what is available to all right out of the box. 
Okay, so here I am in Zendesk Explorer and you can see the pre-built dashboards available to you. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the Zendesk support pre-built dashboard to review. As you can see, there are a number of charts and figures here. Now this is all the information on your Zendesk support tickets. As you can see, it covers created, unsolved and solved tickets. Now there are also a number of tabs at the top with other areas and these will have reports all related with that information such as efficiency and assignee activity. There are also a number of filters here on the dashboard. Uh, one of the most important is the time filter. So I'll go over to that now and it allows you to do advanced or simple changes to the date. Now the default is the last 30 days but as you can see here from the simple menu you could choose from the past month for the past year. The filters also extend uh, to groups, brands, channels. So here you could change and select your one of your ticket groups such as billing or messaging. And once that is applied, the charts on the pre-built dashboard will update. And if I scroll down, you can just see all the graphs and reports available to you on just this tickets tab. So you can see there is a wealth of reporting data here. So next we'll look at the query library. So every query that you've created uh, on your Zendesk Explorer account, it will be stored in this library and you're able to favorite them and, and see what dashboards uh, they're actually a part of. So I'll actually just look at one of the custom queries here. Now this will open in what we call the query builder. Now when you're creating a custom query, this is the area you'll come. You select the data set or the, where you want your information to come and then you can create your query here. So here we have uh, a knowledge base actually and it's the number of views per user role. So how many people have viewed your articles? You can see that anonymous is the highest but then we've got the staff member and the end user. And you can see that this is built from the metrics involved with the knowledge base, published articles, and this is also broken down by attributes. So in the column here, you can see the number of options available. So this is the query builder, and this is when you, when you want to create custom queries, this is the area you would come. So now I'll go back over and look at the data sets. Now this is all the kind of products related to your Zendesk account. So we have, you know, the data sets for guide, support for SLAs, answer bot, we have uh, a data set for ticket updates, tickets themselves, and then your channels here for calls and chats. And now we'll just wrap up by looking at the admin settings. So the first option here is for dashboard email delivery. Now this is when you have scheduled delivery of dashboards to colleagues, these will be displayed here. There's obviously none at the moment. You can also go over to data set authorizations and this is for admins to decide you know what members of staff have access to certain data sets and dashboards and lastly here we just have uh, where you can actually you know select default color so these could be relevant to your brand and that just they will be populated when you create queries and there's also some options here for exporting data Here's an important best practice to consider before you start diving deep into your own analytics and reporting. We advise you to define the metrics you need to measure and determine your reporting goals beforehand. As you can see, it's easy to get lost or overwhelmed at the volume of data available to you. Every customer service interaction has many different parts. For example, a single ticket could contain the ticket creation time, the language used by the end user, and whether or not the end user was satisfied. There are many data sets with a lot of information contained in each one. Reporting on all this data will be unwieldy and not a good use of time. You can certainly glance at the pre-built dashboards and their tabs, but it's much more valuable and efficient to know what you're looking for first. Well, where do you start? We'll look at some common questions you might ask yourself when it comes to defining the metrics you need to measure. The first is how and when do your customers reach you? What are your most popular channels? What hours and days are busiest? 
Does this remain constant or does it change over time? With this information, you can understand if you're adequately staffing the channels you have made available to customers. As mentioned previously, the most common measure of success is customer satisfaction. In particular, you might want to know if they're satisfied with the service provided by your agents. This could also be broken down by ticket groups or channels. Is there a particular group excelling or struggling? Is there a channel that is improving or declining over time? With this information, you can try to immediately address any customer pain points and make the necessary changes for an immediate impact. Luckily, both of these common questions can be answered within the pre-built dashboards. Let's take these reporting goals we have determined and return to the pre-built dashboard to find the answers. Remember we are looking for how and when your customers reach you, as well as overall customer satisfaction. The answer to our first question could be found on the first tab of the main support dashboard. As this is quite a common reporting goal, it makes sense that it can be found fairly easily. I'll also make a point of changing the time filter to the last year to get a better scope of the data that we're looking for. As you can see, these graphs and charts have now updated. And if we scroll down here, we can see two ready-made graphs to give us our answer. So if here we have tickets created by hour. We can see that the busiest time last year is at three o'clock. And the, the, on the right, we have the, the busiest days of the week. And we can see that that was Wednesday. So very quickly, we're able to determine that Wednesdays at 3 p.m. was the busiest time. Now, if we scroll down further, we can see some information on ticket channels. We can see that chat was the most popular channel with 35%. And this is followed by voice, web, and email. So that's a quick glance at what the most popular channels were. But if we scroll down further again, we can actually see this over a period of time. So that this chart looks a little bit messy, but we can see there's some spikes in, in times that were busy for certain channels. Now we've spotted that chat was the busiest, so we can select that now and filter it. And we can see here, now there seemed to be a spike around March uh, this year. So perhaps there were reasons there that for next year we can prepare and maybe change our staffing to adequately suit that. So our next question, we actually go to the tab for satisfaction. It's already there for us. And this time, it'd be good to maybe filter by group to see how certain groups are satisfying uh, your customers. So I'll select uh, customer agents, and we can see that the information has updated. And here again, we have a ready-made query that shows the number of good v bad satisfaction tickets. The customer agents group is doing very well. We can see they've all been rated good, some with a comment and some without. But we can also look at different things. So if we go to Zendesk Talk, um, again, this is broken down by calls that come in. So we have the most popular hours for inbound calls and the most, uh, the busiest days of the week. And again, we go to chat we can see similar information specifically for chat. Again, chats by hour and the average chats by day of the week. So very quickly, we have defined these reporting goals and we've come on to our pre-built dashboards and we can find the answers to that. So how and when our customers contact us and the satisfaction for each kind of channel. And I'm just going to return quickly to the support dashboard. So if you have colleagues or managers who, who want to see this information. Every dashboard you can click on share. You can select groups of agents or individuals and this will send a link to them so they can come and look at the dashboard. Or you could also schedule a delivery. So this could uh, come in someone's inbox maybe every morning at let's say eight o'clock and they will get a link to this dashboard and they can refer to all the charts and analytics. So, in summary, make data-driven decisions to your business and teams using analytics. Increase your operational efficiency as well as your customer's experience by acting on reporting data and trends. 
and define the metrics you need to measure to help identify your business needs.